it's Lou Brown with another of my 101 powerful, profitable ways for real estate investors like you to win, close more deals, and accelerate your cash flow. Today's tip is number 20. Control the closing. You choose the attorney or title company and include that in the contract. Now, one of the things I've found is Whenever I let the seller control where the closing is going to be, or if I let a real estate agent control where the closing is going to be, I've found that I have to go through some pain and suffering in, in getting in relationship with this new closing agent or attorney. So I've found that my life is a lot better if I have my own team. And in my contracts, I tell the seller where the closing is going to be. Or I tell the real estate agent where the closing is going to be. Why? Because they understand us, they know us, and if there's ever a problem in the future, like maybe they made a mistake in the title search, you're never going to hear about it. They're going to take care of business, they're going to take care of you. And let's face it, money makes the world goes, go round. These agencies love their fees and they especially love people that bring them repeat business. So find someone in your local area that can do that or use one of our national title search companies and title research companies. We've got a opportunity for you there. It's called streetsmartwiz.com forward slash title whiz, T-I-T-L-E-W-I-Z. But do find someone that can be on your team that can close these transactions for you and understand how we close transactions. We do some unique things in our world. One is that we always take title to our properties in trust. I'm going to be teaching you that in another one of these series. Have the seller refinance their home, get the cash that they need, and sell it to you subject to the existing loan. Now, how does that work? Well, let's say that you go to the house and in one of my other tips, I said that we go through a presentation with our sellers. When we're going through the presentation, we do something called the cost to sell worksheet. We get down to a final number. That shows the seller their equity. Now, let's say that our seller was insisting, really did need cash. Okay, how can we get them their cash and how can we stay out of the bank and not qualify for a loan? I love that part. I've never been to the bank. I've never qualified for a loan on a single family or small multifamily property. Now, if I can do it, I know you can do it. So one of the ways I've done that in the past is the seller says, let's say that their equity in that property is $20,000. Okay, great. Then we have the seller go ahead and apply for and get a new loan on the property. They get the money from that new loan. Then we take over the payments on that brand new loan. So we buy the property subject to the existing financing. Now, when we use that cost to sell worksheet, just know <laughs> that property has not been financed up to 100% of the property. It's been financed significantly lower than the value of that property. So it's easy for them to be able to qualify for a new loan because there's so much equity in the property. And if they have a good relationship with their local bank, they might be able to easily get that loan. Now, there's other ways that we can do this, and I love sharing them with you. I've found 37 different ways that we can structure transactions. I even have a full-blown training on this called Millionaire Dealmaker. It's a four-day event just on the topic of creating deals, and I need you to master transaction engineering, master deal structuring, because that's where the money is. One of the things I teach you is that you make your money going in, you realize your money while you own it and when you sell it, but you make your money going in. So you got to master structuring deals and Millionaire Dealmaker is where we do that. Now you can learn more about that in my buying volume one and and you can also learn that and Millionaire Dealmaker, the live training. So if you're interested in the system that we use, the printed system, then you'd go to streetsmartinvestor.com and look under tools. If you're interested in the training, go to millionairedealmaker.com. When optioning to buy, 
or when buying on agreement for deed, always have the seller place their deed in escrow. Now one of the things you might have heard about is that you could actually purchase a property by simply getting an option and a lease with the seller. So rather than actually getting the deed on the property, maybe you're not so sure there's equity there, maybe you'd be better off doing a lease with the option to buy, maybe the seller doesn't want to give you their deed. Maybe they want to stop you from getting their deed. Maybe they're concerned that you don't, won't make the payments. Maybe they're concerned they would have to foreclose to get their property back. I've got solutions for that and I love it. So the step one for me is to try to get the deed and we buy that property subject to the existing loan. So we purchase it in trust and then we take over the existing financing and I teach you that in another segment and in volume four, land trusts. And let's say that the seller, for whatever reason, probably your own concern about whether this is gonna work or not, your own, uh, let's say, way of being, that you're not giving off the right vibes, they're a little bit concerned with your own apprehension about doing it, because that's really the problem. Uh, it's not that it's a bad concept or there's anything wrong with the concept, it's that you have to get com comfortable with it yourself and you have to learn the, what I call the magic words and I've definitely got those magic words and I teach them to you. <laughs> but let's say they say no. Okay, what's our backup plan? Our backup plan is a thing called agreement for deed where we buy the property with an agreement to get the deed at a later date when you perform, when you do what you say you're going to do. Now, when you buy the property on agreement for deed, and yes, I've got the paperwork to do that in my vi buying volume one system so that you've got everything that you need to be able to purchase properties. Remember that my philosophy is, and what I teach you, is we don't go to banks and we don't qualify for loans. So there's many different ways that we can have the seller be the bank. So again, if they're not going to sell you the property subject to the existing loan, then our backup plan is we're going to get something called an agreement for deed. And if we can't get the agreement for deed, our backup plan is a thing called a lease with the option to buy. Now I've got all the paperwork to do that. And the key is that when we purchase a property that way, we want the seller to place their deed in escrow. And the reason is something might happen to the seller. They might die, they might get divorced, they might leave town, we might, they might not be findable, and all of a sudden we're ready today to get our deed, but we can't find the seller anywhere, or the seller's dead. So, what do we do? If we've already got the deed in escrow with escrow instructions, then it prevents the seller from controlling that deed any longer, because as long as we fulfill on those instructions, as long as we do what we said we're going to do, then we can get our deed without the seller having to be present. Isn't that a wonderful solution? It's about negotiations. Get all the issues covered before you make an offer. Well, that's so important. When you're putting a deal together, sometimes you negotiate one part, but you really haven't gotten all the pieces put together yet. So you might have got an agreement over here and then you have to bring another issue to the table and you have to get agreement on that. And then there's another issue and you have to get agreement on that. So what I suggest is before you close, before you actually agree, say, okay, well, we can take that under consideration. What else do you need to hear about or what else uh, is of concern to you? And then you put that back to the seller and they say, well, I don't have anything else. And then you reframe and restate what was just said. So, Mr. Jones, if I hear you correctly, what you're saying is, if I were to go ahead and take the house as is, and I were to be able to take the property next week when you move out, and I were to take it upon myself to go ahead and pay this year's property taxes, and I was to go ahead and take the uh let's say the trash out of the house. I, I go ahead and take the house as is and I get rid of all the trash and the furniture and everything in the house. Then we have a deal, is that correct? And then you put it back to them, have them agree to that. 
and then complete your paperwork. Now, one of the things I teach you also is to come to the table with some of the paperwork already complete. So all you would have to do is add one or two different clauses in the special stipulations section of my standard purchase and sale agreement. Now, what I'm teaching you from is something called negotiations. And this is one of my systems that's available to you at streetsmartinvestor.com. Now, this is where we go through all the personality types and all the different things that you have to negotiate in a real estate deal. And it's very powerful because you can actually hear me discussing exactly what to say and how to say it. One of the most important things also is to know who you're negotiating with and what their personality type is. Show the seller how you are benefiting them. Now this is so important because many times sellers really don't appreciate some of the things that you're bringing to the table. One of them is that you can close quickly. Now that can be very valuable to a seller. So you want to contrast that. Well, of course, Mr. And Mrs. Jones, you have an opportunity now to go ahead and put your property on the market with a real estate agent, and they're going to tie it up typically for at least six months. Most real estate agents won't even take a listing for three months. They only want six months or even longer. And in fact, if things don't work out, they're going to ask you to relist the property. Now, remember this, they haven't paid you a dime to tie up your property for all that period of time with that listing agreement. Now here's what we can do for you. We're different. We can buy your house now. We can buy your house as is. Now let me tell you why that's important. Because a real estate investor, they would want you to go ahead and fix things so that you could get the highest value for the property. Well, if you got the funds to do that with, that might be a good idea. But if you'd like to get rid of the property right now, we can take it as is. You don't have to fix another thing. You see, what I'm doing here is I'm contrasting what benefits that you're bringing to the table. You want to actually say those things to the seller because sometimes they haven't really quantified those and valued those. And you do bring value. As a real estate investor, you got to know that, that you're not the bottom feeding bad people that they, that some people actually paint the brush the picture of a real estate investor to be. It's just not true. We help people. We don't hurt people. We give people an opportunity to get rid of their problem. We can take their problem away from them right away. And for many people, that house is like an anchor and it's on them and they just got to get rid of it. And when you come in, it's like a breath of fresh air, it gives them a whole new opportunity. That's who you are. Shut up. <laughs> don't want to mean to, uh, scare you, but that's exactly what I want you to be thinking of. Like somebody like Lou Brown was just yelling at you, shut up, shut up, shut up. Now here's what it says. It says, let the seller talk, listen, they'll tell you what they need so that you can buy their house. Now this is why it's, you know, it's amazing. I watched so many real estate investors over my years. Of course, I've been doing this over 40 years and I've learned a lot of things about how people learn, how people interpret things, how people act. You know, we all are a product of our DNA. We're all a product of our background, our experience, and how we are actually wired ourselves in terms of our personality type. And I've noticed that a lot of people talk over the seller when the seller's talking. Instead of learning, you will not make money when your mouth is moving. You will make money when you're listening. So I want to encourage you, shut up, listen, learn, discover, find out the seller's pain. That's the goal. Discover what's missing in their life. Discover what a challenge is in their life. Once you have that, now we can offer a solution to their problem. Figure out the personality type you are dealing with and negotiate accordingly. Now, what do I mean by that? So you want to listen to people. Listen. Even over the phone, you can discover what personality type you're dealing with. Now there's four basic personality types. Of course, there's iterations of this and everybody's got all four personality types. 
But the important thing to learn is that there's four basic personality types. A, that means bottom line oriented. They're not interested in your conversation. They just want to know how much you're going to pay them for the house. Well, you don't know yet. And so you got to deal with and overcome that personality type. B, they're all about the looks. So I've got A, B, C, D are the four personality types that I teach. And uh, B is about the looks. You know, how does it look? How does it make them look? Do they like how it looks? So usually you can tell a B because they will talk to you, they will listen to you, and you can hear it in their voice uh, that they care about the looks of their house. And so they'll talk about their house. They'll talk about some of the nice things that they did to their house and with their house. Now they'll also say, well, you can't come now, I gotta clean up. <laughs> so obviously they care that you think that they are clean and that they are pretty and they are nice. Now you can always tell a bee because they usually have nice hair and nice jewelry, earrings, bracelets, necklaces, and the woman, she's amazing too. Now, <laughs> you know, people that are, uh, you know, that care about their looks, you can just tell because of the way they dress and how sharp they are. And they care that you think that they're sharp as well. So you wanna compliment them on their looks. Now C's, they are computer brains. They're all detail oriented. They want details and more details and more details and more details. Well, what do you do? You have to talk to them in their language. And that's the C's. Now the D's, <laughs> the D's are just wonderful, caring, loving people on the planet. They take care of people. So nurses, uh, uh, firefighters, police, uh, anybody that takes care of people. Uh, these are, are, when I say police, I'm talking about the less aggressive ones, maybe the ones that work in the office. Uh, the ones with guns, they're, they're more of a different personality type. But these are the things that you want to learn. Once you learn these different personality types, it will change how you're negotiating with, with people. It will change what you say and how you say it. So you want to learn how to listen. You want to learn how to speak when you're with these personality types. Now I teach you about all the personality types in negotiations. Now this is volume three of my whole enchilada of real estate investing. You can learn more about that at streetsmartinvestor.com. Just click on tools and go to volume three negotiations. By the way, you do your own personality test as well to find out what personality type you are because your interaction with others is relative to the personality that you have. And let me tell you something. Once I learned about personalities and personality types, I learned how to speak to people, and then I discovered that they could actually hear me, and I did a lot more deals. So this is a very important part of your overall strategy and your learning. Know all the items you can give up on before you proceed. Now let me tell you why that's so important. Because as you're going through the home, there's going to be certain things that you're going to see. And if you are going to give up, for example, on repairs, then you want to know what the repairs are going to be. And it's good to have a list of things that you can negotiate on, such as uh, the seller may have an existing loan and you would love to take over that existing loan. That's one of my favorite ways to buy properties. The seller may have equity and they may be able to do seller financing when you present it to them, when you ask them. And by the way, never do that in the beginning. Always do that at the end. And there's many different things. The condition of the property, the speed at which you take over the property, the, whether you take it with a tenant in place or not whether you accept it as is or with repairs. And then it's a matter of what repairs. So there's many different things that can be negotiated. I want you to make a list and in your mind, just know that each one of those has its own value. So if a seller asks you for something, then ask them for something. So there's always an offset. And so as it says, no 
Know what you can give up on. Give concessions slowly. If I do this, will you do that? Okay, what that means is that there are so many different items in a negotiation. And it's important because they might ask you to pay the closing costs, for example. Well, closing costs can be a large amount of money. And it may be something that if you agree to that, then what do you get in return? So it's important that you're not giving up all the stuff in the beginning, being anxious to actually get the deal. And then later finding out that actually it wasn't nearly as profitable as you thought it was going to be. So consider all of the different expenses and consider that when the seller asks you for something that you get something in return. For example, let's say that the seller was arguing with you or discussing, let's not call it arguing, discussing them paying the closing costs. And you say, well, I'll tell you what, if I were to take care of the closing costs, would you take care of that water heater that doesn't work? Or would you take care of that leaking roof? Or would you take care of the landscaping that's not done? Or would you take care of replacing the carpet? You see, there's so many things that once you look at the property, you'll know items that you can trade off with. So don't give everything up in the beginning. Let's see what we can do along the way to adjust. There's a reason that the word is called negotiations because Many times people are willing to give and you've got to be prepared to ask for that. If you don't ask, guess what? You don't get. Ask questions, don't talk. Now what does that mean? Ask questions, don't talk. Well listen, you start running your mouth and all of a sudden you can actually talk over the possibilities. So whenever I'm with a seller, I think to myself, how can I ask a question and discover more? Mr. and Mrs. Jones, how long have you owned the property? No kidding. Now the loan that's on the property currently, is that the original loan that you took out at the time that you purchased the property or have you refinanced that along the way or adjusted that mortgage along the way? Oh, no kidding. Now tell me, have you ever updated the say the air conditioning system or the roof or the appliances or has anything been updated in the house? Really, what is that? Then wait. And always think to yourself, wait, wait for an answer. They may need some time to think and they might not have thought of yet what they should do or how they would do it. And so you, you give them time and if you see that they're thinking, don't interrupt, don't come up with another thing, or don't help them either, because sometimes they're gonna say things that you had no idea that they would say. So listen, ask questions and listen. Find out what they need, meaning the seller, then craft your offer to show them how you'll give them what they need. So by that I mean, find the seller's pain. The seller's pain is a very important thing for you to discover, number one, and number two, to address. So in your presentation to the seller, as you're listening to them, as you're discovering, in another tip I mentioned, ask questions, discover what their situation is, discover what their pain is. Now once you do that, then you're going to use that to help solve their problem. Explain to them what it is that you can do for them to solve that problem. Tie in their problem with your solution. So for example, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, I'm so happy for you that you are transferring to another state and I'm so glad that that's working out for you and I've got some good news for you. You know that if you were to list your property with a real estate agent, you would have to carry that property for six months or even longer, you'd have to make payments. I've got good news for you. We can actually take your property right away. How quickly would you like to move? Boom, you find out that information if you haven't already. 
but you always want to tie back in that you are bringing something to the table that's different than the others. Once, If you've done a good job actually uncovering and discovering what their pain is, then your solution is absolutely magnificent. But again, you need to incorporate that into your language. I know this is a value because I use it all the time. Justify your offer. Show the seller why, what it will cost them to sell their home the traditional way or the typical way. All right, so when I'm making a presentation to the seller, one of the things we do is a thing called a cost to sell worksheet. We actually share with the seller what those costs are. We talk about the real estate commission if they were to list their home. We talk about closing costs. We talk about repairs to the property. All the different aspects of what it will cost them to sell their home. And if they were to move, let's say they're being transferred to another state, then that's another cost that has to be considered as well. They've got to pay for someone to mow the grass. They've got to keep the utilities on. There's many different added expenses that they may not have even considered. So when I'm showing them by already knowing what their issue is, what their challenge is, then I'm also showing them, hey, this is what this is actually going to cost you. And it really helps them to understand, first of all, you're not, you're not pulling the wool over their eyes, you're telling them the truth about what their expenses would be. And that's why I love our process we call call it the cost to sell worksheet, but it really illustrates to the seller exactly what their situation is. Well, this is all uh, covered in my system called negotiations. And this is available on streetsmartinvestor.com. So do take a look at that, see what it's all about. It does come with CDs that walk you through the different personality types, what to say, how to say it. It might be of big benefit to you. So this one's going to be borrow private money from folks who are not in the business. Let me tell you what that is. So basically a lot of folks uh, that are close to real estate, they also understand money and they understand interest rates and they understand the power of that and they understand just how much profit you can make by allow them allowing you to borrow their money. And so typically when you're close to real estate, you're actually paying more for the money. If you're borrowing it from another real estate investor or if you're borrowing from a private money lender that's affiliated or associated to real estate. Now, if you think about it this way, there's lots of people in your cell phone and you think about all the different contacts that you've got there. Many of them have money and you don't even know it. Why? Because you've never discussed it with them. You've never discussed if they have an IRA or a 401k or personal funds that are uninvested. Imagine that you could tap into that money. Now, imagine that you could borrow money at say 4% interest and no points and no closing costs. Wouldn't that be phenomenal? Well, that's exactly what I teach you how to do. I've got a system called borrowing. You can find out more about that at streetsmartinvestor.com and then click on tools and click on borrowing. And that's a, that includes a script of what to say and how to say it. But it's just amazing that there's so much money available out there. And when you tap into folks that are not close to uh, the, the financial world, it's amazing what they will accept. Why? Because they're currently earning zero to zero to one percent on their money. So imagine that they could put their money to work using safe, secure real estate at only four percent. Well, four percent, when you compare that to CDs, when you compare that to what banks pay when the money's just sitting there in the bank, that is a blessing. And you can bless a lot of people in your world simply by telling them who you are, what you do, and what you, how you can help them with their money. Before you say what you'll pay, ask them what they are earning on their money, then offer to increase that. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, so many folks have their money sitting in bank accounts right now, lots of it. 
and it's just sitting there earning 0, 0.0 something percent, which is z zero. <laughs> In fact, because of inflation, inflation has averaged 3% over the last 20 years, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, 2.94% to be accurate, then anyone who's earning less than that is really going backwards. Now imagine that you can step in as a real estate investor and you can offer them something like what the banks charge, for example. So if you were to go to the bank as an A credit borrower and borrow at today's rates, look at that rate, how great that is. Well, imagine that you could offer that to Mrs. Jones, who's got her money sitting in the bank account right now, earning 0.0 something percent. And she can put her money to work helping deserving families end up with home ownership. Isn't that a noble and valuable thing? And what I found out is many lenders care what they do with their money. They care what their money's gonna be used for. And doesn't it make sense for you to give them that opportunity and that option? Well, we've got a script for that. What to say, how to say it. And once you learn this valuable thing, it's all there sitting ready for you. And in fact, when you look at your contact list and your phone, you're gonna find that there's people that absolutely love this. So get the script. There's more about this. And in fact, there's a lender presentation kit at streetsmartinvestor.com and click on tools and then look up the lender presentation kit. I think you'll find that valuable. Help someone who has some money that they would like to loan put that money to work. And if they've got a self-directed IRA, fantastic. They can move that money, they can actually loan that money to you. But what if they've got money in a retirement account and it's not a self-directed account? Self-directed means that they can actually direct that the money comes from the IRA custodian to you. And what you give back is a note to the IRA custodian. And they hang on to that and watch the payments come in based upon those notes. Well, that's exactly what you can help Mrs. Jones do. You can help her move her money from a traditional IRA into what's called a self-directed IRA. And there's plenty of self-directed IRA custodians out there in the world that can take care of that for you. So that's what I encourage you to do. And then once you help them set up the IRA, then you can borrow the money from it. And it's one of the easiest monies to borrow because people don't need that money for their groceries. They don't need that money to pay their bills. That money is orbiting around the sun in their retirement account. And most of that money is earning 0.0 something percent interest. Imagine that you can now give bank rates for the money. And I'm talking about what the bank charges for a, a loan. You can now give that to a retirement account holder. So help them move the money from just a traditional IRA into a self-directed IRA. What's important for you is that uh, I'm teaching you about borrowing money, but not the traditional way. I'm teaching you about how to borrow money the untraditional way that I've done since I got started in this business. I've never been to a bank. I've never qualified for a loan on a single family or small multifamily property. If I can do it, I know you can do it. I know you can avoid all of the expenses, the headaches, the pain, the suffering that it takes to qualify for a traditional loan. Now, on number 35, I say line up access to money in advance of a deal. Now, what I mean is that once you contact, and in other words, plan in advance, put this on your calendar, know that you're going to have a deal come, and in some cases, you're going to need all cash, or you're going to need rehab money, or you're going to need down payment money. You're going to need some cash. Well, if you've already accessed those opportunities to borrow money, then you've got the way that you can actually use that money. So let's say that you've got your phone, and I've mentioned this in uh, another tip. You get your phone, you look at the contacts, and you find where those folks are. You call them up, 
and you use our script that we've got so dutifully laid out for you and you start asking some questions. First of all, you say to them, let me, let me just share with you what we're doing now. I'm a certified affordable housing provider. We help people regardless of their credit or financial background to end up with ownership of a property. And we work with private money lenders who have some idle funds sitting in their IRA or 401k or their personal account and that money's not making nearly the money it ought to be making and there's or earning uh, zero to zero point one percent and what we do is put that money to work using safe secure real estate do you know anybody who might have some private funds that they would like to put to work ask the question. It's amazing what comes out of that conversation. I've been doing this for a while, baby, and I know what happens, and I know that this can benefit you. So let's make that happen for you. I'd love to share more of my profitable tips with you. All you got to do is like this video, love this video, let others know about it, pass it on to your friends, pass it on to your family, and I'd love to help you build an amazing real estate business. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon. Yeah, baby.